Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's the latest of our video calls. We've been chatting to everybody while we're still sort of stuck at home at the minute. And I am delighted to say from Born of Osiris, Lee is on the line. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. No, it's good to see you, buddy. It's good to see you. And we start this off in the same way every kind of time, which is to say, hope you, your loved ones, your bandmates all keeping very safe, keeping as well as you can throughout the uh, rather crazy 18 months or so we've had. And I guess before we get into this new music, we're here to talk about just a little bit really about how you found this kind of extended time at home. You know, you're another musician where life is lived out on the road. It's got to be kind of surreal having this much downtime, right? Yeah, well, I wish the same to you and your loved ones, of course. Um, the, you know, it's been interesting because there's been things that we've wanted to do that we've never found the time for. For example, um, so Nick Rossi is a new member of our band, and he's currently, like, if you've seen us with him, um, he's been on bass. But uh, the story with him is he's a guitar player first, and he's um, my guitar player in my rock band that I have called In Motive. And so that's how we've had a relationship writing together before he was in Born with Cyrus. So... Uh, our bass player, David, needed, uh, you know, I think he needed a break from touring, you know, and uh, so he stepped down for a bit. Um, it was, you know, relatively close to tour, unfortunately. Um, you know, no, no bad beef in that. It just was what it was. And so I knew Nick could step in right away and, um, and sort things out. Uh, being a really good guitar player, I think he could come in, handle the bass parts pretty, pretty easily. Um, but uh, so we did. And he's also an incredible songwriter. So on the simulation um like he was he was that's when he started writing songs with us because up until that time you know the bulk skeletons of the songs were created by myself and cameron our drummer you know and um and other guitar players throughout the years would you know maybe add things just as any band member would but like i'm talking the songs so it was nice because on simulation for the first time we had a third member submitting like uh you know bass demos which is great and uh but a lot of people didn't consider you know what that was because he was on bass so and we always talked about moving him to guitar. As, you know, as soon as we toured with him once or twice, and the rest, because I knew I loved the guy, I just needed the rest of the guys to know that you know they enjoyed traveling with him and stuff. So once they knew that, we wanted to switch him to guitar. However, like just knowing the songs on bass, it's not quite as doesn't mean you know like the har certain harmonies. Like plus, like even if you know like the guitar part, you know which harmony am I playing? Which harmony are you supposed to play? So there's just so much to work out that we didn't feel like we had time. Uh, you know, pre-pandemic. So that was one thing that we made the switch on. So now when you see us live, you'll see him on guitar. Um, opens up the door to Dave if he wants to come back down the road. That's more, that's totally up to him. Um, like I said, there's zero bad blood. I love that dude to death. Um, but right now that's the current formation. So that was one thing. Also like the artwork on this um, exam, uh, this record, sorry if I'm getting way too ahead of myself, but just trying to answer the question is, uh, it's different. So I think we've had a, a one kind of artwork a lot, you know, or two, you know, there's definitely definitive Born of Osiris artwork. And um, this time with him making the switch of guitar and like the pandemic going down, the, the world feeling like it just went away and us coming back wanting to make a splash. We want to do like a new look. Um, and so this is why it, it, it's relevant is to answer your question is like, we spent six months on the art for this album because when you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, which is what we were doing on the art, like it's crazy. And we're like five dudes who are all very opinionated um, and, and care so much about the artwork because of the band, the artwork for this band's always been important. Not that it isn't for other bands, but super important here. Um, and it took months to find something that each one of us could be like, I like that. And then we're like, now we want an Enneagram or whatever it's called, where you can flip it any which way and it says the same thing. And then we, another artist for that. And so those are the things we were able to really take our time on given the circumstances. Yeah, it's funny that you say that, and we should say, of course, the, the new album is kind of imminent at the time of recording. It's Angel or Alien, it's on the way. And uh, and I guess that's a really interesting point, just even down to things like artwork. Did you find that was the same with the music at all? Because, you know, I would imagine you had really the luxury of time in terms of working on this record. It's never necessarily pressured in terms of time frames, but clearly right now you had a lot more time on your hands to finesse little things here and there. How was it actually working on the music aspect of it? And did you find that... Did you find that kind of mental process going, oh yeah, let's spend that little bit longer perfecting these bits? I think, so I think the record was done by the time the pandemic oh, hit, wow. but like at least tracked, right? So the bulk of the beginning of the pandemic was mixing. And so another pro, again, obviously the whole thing's tragedy, but like, but the, another pro, if I have to find silver linings like we're doing here, is that um, we were able to mix at home. And so often our bands will, um, you know, they'll be in a bus in Europe with their Apple Pods, which sound fine, by the way, that's cool. Or they're just on the road with these travel headphones that they have or whatever it is. But 
one plus was wherever we each individually loved to listen to music, that's where we were able to listen and mix this record. So that was, a, uh, you know, a plus. Um, as far as music writing goes, I would say this. Um, so Angel Alien comes out, you know, like a week or something. Um, and we already have probably eight songs for the next one because of the pandemic. And uh, my second solo album will come out in the fall, announcing soon, I think, I hope. But I already have six songs for the third one. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where, you know, everything felt like it went away. But it's also like when we come back, we're going to keep hitting. It's so nice that it's so, so nice to hear you kind of, I mean, it's been the case with so many bands, you might imagine, but they really want to hit the ground running with stuff, you know, it's like, yeah, we've had to put pause on things. Let's just get back. Let's just keep doing what we do as much as we possibly can. And, you know, let's, let's get into the record a little bit, man. I want to talk a bit about those singles, uh, specifically the title track. Really. I'm always fascinated. I, I ask everyone about album titles and stuff, and I will ask you that as well. Why did you think that one summed up the record as a whole, but also that title track in general, you know, putting it out there as a single kind of as a real marker in the sand like yep this is this era this is what we're doing now tell me a little bit about writing that particular track for this so the writing the track in particular was funny because the whole record was funny and i'm sure we'll get into it but like that particular track was the last one because we were like done with the record for the most part and um it was like the the intro keyboard to angel or alien that kind of sounds like a, uh like a foghorn sounding like you know it's hard to explain whatever but like that was an outro for another song so basically um one of the guys at the label nick walters was like i really like that key line and i don't understand why it happens for 10 seconds as the song fades out at the end and so he was like hey can you guys make this a song and so it was weird this one too because like i said usually like i'll present a song which would be drums, guitars, keys, bass to the band. And obviously it becomes one of Osiris. It's not like I'm the sole writer situation. You know what I mean? I'm not pulling that role, but I present a completed idea and then the band just does their thing, right? And, and Cameron too, and now Rossi, the thir three of us. So, but this one was like, hey, can you make this a song? We're like, yeah, that was like done, but sure, let's do it. And then like, so I made the intro where it's like building up, building up, building up. And then when it drops, like Nick Rossi made the music, like the, the rhythm. And then like it, like it was really cool. Like we each just started passing along this session, which we haven't really done before. And maybe we'll do it more often, but that was the creation of the song. Very interesting. And then um, the creation of the, the, the title is very interesting to me too. So Joe and Ronnie are two vocalists. They're two lyricists and they are very different dudes as we all are. But um, like, for example, one grew up and may, uh, to be honest, I don't know to this day, but through our whole career, Christian, and then the other one grew up not at all like that. And so imagine like writing lyrics where you're feeling in your heart, you have a Christian here and then you have, not like an, a Satanist by any means, but just like someone who just doesn't align with that in particular. So what I find throughout our career is that you'll find that our lyrics sometimes aren't very dead specific about one thing. There'll be ideas for you to make your own decisions about like in a way like singularity off of one of our rec records it talks about what singularity is kind of deal but it's not like this is fucking bad or this is fucking good i mean obviously you know as technology grows like there's pros and cons but um anyways my point is like with things we're always presenting something for you to make your own thoughts of or or a, a line where you can relate to um, a breakup in a relationship, or maybe it's a breakup with your family, a lost parent, or maybe your band, like kind of try to be uh, specific enough because you're trying to say something, but not like so specific where this is what it is and that's what it is. Like, so for me, the Angel Alien thing is interesting because I wasn't there when they, um, I mean, I saw the emails like blah, blah, blah. But as far as the lyrics that follow that, I, I asked Joe, what does it mean to you? And then I asked Ronnie, what does it mean to you? Two totally different answers. So I found it interesting and, you know, I feel, I feel like it just ties into us in a way, like who we are. This might not be the answer to what the lyrics to the song are about, but as far as what it means to each of us, it's different. So for me, I find it interesting too, because like you have this alien, you know, and uh, it almost reminds me of like a Ronnie situation. You have this angel and it's like Joe who grew up Christian. And then I think it's cool that we have, um, now there's pyramids on the artwork, which is kind of always a Born Osiris thing, right? But what you see find interesting ties is like, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to go down conspiracy theory road right here, but like you see a lot of people talk about the pyramids and where they're angled towards the sky and how they're related to uh, aliens and, and like it's super interesting like and again, I'm not telling you to go 
watch Ancient Aliens and like lose your mind, but I'm just telling you, there's some fun correlations all over the place. And for what it reminds me of is, um, is that is just my guys and who they are. And you know, to Joe, I remember he almost looked at it like the angel is the positive and the the alien is like the evil. So there's like a good and bad there. And you know what I mean? So it's like it's almost different to whoever you talk about. I can't speak on lyrics, but um, yeah, that's the best way I can answer that question. No, it's interesting, man. I think it's always very interesting when, particularly in the lyric area, where something can be interpreted and uh, interpreted in a number of different ways because that's what that's what builds an audience really isn't it it's having something a little bit universal but people can put their own personal stamp on it as well and it's cool if that bleeds into the artwork and titles and all other areas man and i guess that leads actually on to another question really with it which is the uh you know you already mentioned the simulation there you know that was that was quite a big moment for you guys and it was uh it, i just always am interested when you've had a moment like that how you not react against it but I mean, what, what were the aims coming off that record when you go into something completely new like this, particularly at this moment? Is it like, oh, these are the things that worked and we want to push those more? Or is it a reaction against it? You know what? We want to try something very, very different from what we did there. You know, I don't know if this is like a selfish approach to anything, because you, you hear bands that say, like, we do what the hell we want and forget about, like, what you want. And it's like, OK, but you're supposed to make a connection. So I get that. But then there's also like the bands that are like, only like, oh, this is what you like. Okay, I'm gonna just only that for please you, please you. And then I don't feel like that's like with integrity. So I always look at it like this. Like, of course we're aware of what works and what's not, but we're not gonna, if we wanna write a certain kind of record, we're gonna do it as well. So I'm not on any of these sides as with really fucking anything in life. I think being an extreme is, is crazy on anything, but like, it's like, for me, here's how I always looked at it. Like our fan base goes like this with what they want, like a left and right, right? But I also feel like our music goes like this, like a left and right. And sometimes you feel like they're apart. And then sometimes they kind of come and just hit in the middle. And I feel like we're hitting right now a simulation. We're hitting right here. I can't say that it was on purpose. I can say I'm very happy that we're aligned. But there's some records that like maybe aren't uh, a fan favorite, which are like a band favorite. You know what I mean? So it's hard to answer the question. But like I, I, what we're going to do at the end of the day is, is have integrity with what, anything we do and not do it um, you know, for any other reasons. You'll notice this about Born of Osiris. Since 2007, we've kind of came up and like, and we've been here always doing well ish, you know what I mean? And, um, but we never fell off hard or we never blew up hard. And the reason is because, like, when this was popping, like this trend in music and heavy music was popping, we never hopped on it and jumped up real quick because the bands that I find do that fall quick. And so we've just been steady, uh, you know, done everything with integrity. And uh, so for that reason, like, I don't feel like our bands fluctuated in size a ton, but we've never fell off either. Um, so I just think it's because we're doing it, um, you know, the way we want to do it. We're, we, we know what the fans want to hear, but we're not going to just because I think that if we if I just made a record that like was what the fans wanted to hear, you might even hear there's a little less passion in it for me. And for me with Born of Osiris, the, the most important stuff that I do is the melodies. Like I understand we're a heavy band, but it's those parts that break open and make you go, ah like a deep breath or like a melody that gets stuck in your head. Like that's music to me, especially if you hear like my solo record, like there's no really crazy heavy shit going on. It's really just, I'm trying to sing with my guitar and catch melodies in your head. So, um, and, and so for me to be so passion based when writing, I don't think I could be um, as passionate about something if I'm only doing it because it might make me a bigger paycheck. And I know money's important in life, but I already feel blessed. And um, so that's what that is. Yeah, you guys know what you're about, and that's an important thing. You know what you're about, you know what your audience is about, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. And I guess that must be feeding into, like you said, some new songs kind of already up and running at some kind of stage. I'm sure you won't want to give too much away because this new record isn't even out yet, but what kind of uh, what kind of stage are you at with those, though? Is it just demos? Is it just ideas, or are you a little bit more than that? Yeah, I think we have, like, I have a folder of eight, probably eight, eight demos, and that that's the point where, like... Um, it's what I say, it's like a song that I wrote. That's it. Like there's been, Joe hasn't gone in there and tricked out the keys and changed his keyboard tones. Maybe three of them have vocals that he like whisper screamed cause he was like hanging out on an island somewhere. He's been like, I don't know, I haven't seen the dude all year. He's like in Hawaii all year, but like he's got his laptop on the island. He's doing like whisper screams. It's super funny, but um, yeah, like they're all a mess. They're all sound different, but they're, the ideas are there for like eight songs, I think. Um, and yeah, that would be because of the pandemic, but um, but again, like 
we've put out a, a record every single other year since 2007, which is where our work ethic is there. And like I, I like I said, I feel blessed and I love traveling the world. But my favorite part is, is being in the studio and writing music, you know, and, and uh, you know, there's nothing better, you know, we you could say a million things that are like, what feels amazing? It's like sex or a drug or whatever. But to me, like along with those, not glorifying drugs, but you know what I'm saying, is like the best feeling to me is like you finish a song, I'm done with it, a demo, I press play and I like pace around my studio. So to me, the studio is what's most fun. Writing is the most fun. So um, yeah, I just got to take advantage of that, you know, in the pandemic a bit more, even though I usually always am anyways. I mean, it doesn't surprise me to hear you say that because, I mean, you've been working on some other stuff as well. I want to briefly touch on up. You mentioned solo music. Let's start there. So is that pretty much done, ready to go, that second solo record? Yeah, that's done. Um, basically, it's kind of around the same time as Born of Osiris. Oh However, God. like when you put, you, we put Born of Osiris out, that's the most important at the end of the day. Um, it's like the main part of my career is even at the label financially, like it, that's their baby more so than my solo record is. But where they want to space it out, right? So it's ready. It could have been out right now. But like, um, we just want to, I, I like to put it out after Born of Osiris because I like, okay, well now we're in the spotlight again. Here's our new record. So we're, people are talking about us and looking at our socials and, you know, staying up with us a little bit more than they would a year and a half after the album came out. Um, so I like to stick to behind Born Records at the moment, but I also, uh, you can't just follow it up too quickly. You got to let it breathe. You got to let Born breathe. So yeah, that'll be out in the fall. I have the release date. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's not announced either way, but um, um, yeah, I think this time with that, I know I'll follow up fast just because I'm almost done. Like, and I would have had eight tracks right now, but I cut up one for, I do a podcast as well. And I cut up one piece to like be the intro music to that. Because if you use any other kind of music, including my own, I get flagged for copyright and then my podcast can't be monetized. So I literally gutted one of those songs and turned it into that. But um, yeah, I'll follow up the third, the second solo album quickly. Nice, man. No, it's great to have all these other outlets there. And, and one thing I definitely want to mention, you know, I've chatted with a, a few of the guys involved with the Paradise City series, which, of course, you were heavily involved in with the music side there. Talk to me a little bit, I guess, about, first of all, getting involved, but then also what your approach was for, I mean, you're writing songs for a fictional band. That's kind of a unique experience, right? Yeah, you know, it's so, it's cool. With Ash Avildsen, who is just such a good friend of mine, owner of Samarian Records, for people who don't know that are listening, um, was the best man at my wedding. Like, this is just a man that I respect highly, but I also like, he's a good dude. And I'm not just saying that because we have business together. Like, and this is how it all kind of started, you know, his first movie that he wanted to do right then and there, uh, um, he was using his own band's music from his own label. And maybe that was a money thing. That's cool. But I just looked at it as like, you know what, if someone's going to rise, he like brings his homies with him. And then we did American Satan. So right away I was in on the ground because I had the script before anything was done. So I knew this movie, I knew these people, these characters um, before filming, before casting, right? And he was just like, this is a fucking rock and roll band. Think Motley Crue, think fucking like that kind of shit, like that attitude, that vibe. And I'm like, sweet. Um, it's morphed since then. Like, it's not, it doesn't sound like necessarily Motley Crue, but the swag is kind of like that. I feel like anyways, I just thought it was cool that he was like, you know what? I need music. And, and listen, Ash has just took off in his career right now. He's he going to work with anyone he wants. Like he knows the most famous musicians on every level. But he chose me, right, to, to write for his band. You know what I mean? I, said, I think it says a lot about him um, as a person. It says a lot about, I guess, his faith in me as well, which I appreciate. But yeah, he basically started writing. And so the first move with the movie American Satan, I knew everything, like what was going on. Um, and just wrote songs. And also there's a ton of covers. He, Ash loves covers. For, he does like this, uh, he did like Ceremonials, which is like a Sumerian release of Florence and the Machine covers. He's done, he always pushes for those. He, he thinks like a good cover can could propel a band and if you see it often. Um, I think we've even done a System of a Down cover randomly, but um, um, yeah, so I do a ton of covers and basically it hooked me up at like three in the morning when I go to sleep at like 10 at night. <laughs> but um, I'll wake up to a text usually like six, 7 a.m. when I am waking up and it's like, hey, I need this. And it'll be this cover of this or hey, give me a song like this. And so we did that. We made it American Satan. Uh, we're the Relentless is the band. We made a record for them. Um, and then then he went on to the show. Now the show is a little different. I have no scripts. 
I got, I had no, so I watched the show for the first time and it was news to me. I didn't know when he was going to use one of my songs, what it was going to be at all. So this time around, but he would give me little details like this. Okay, now there's a girl in the band and she's singing too. Or now, hey, this band has a keyboard player. Can you make sure you go heavy on keys? So that was that. And that was equally as fun. And I got to say, man, like, you know, there's bands, like we're blessed where Born of Osiris is, you know, but like there's bands that that, that pandemic crushed them. And it wouldn't have been easy on us either. But like uh, Paradise City was like my money, like over that last year. And I'm so thankful for it. And, um, but it isn't about money, but like, it's just really fun. Like I'm, I'm in the studio every day, Monday through Friday, nine to five. I treat it like a job because um, that's like when my wife goes to work. Right. So it's just easy. Um, and so it's how I can do Born of Osiris, the solo thing, um, in motive, uh, Relentless Paradise City podcast. Um, and then just basically taking care of myself. Like I do like martial arts and, you know, like, you know, physical activities. So having structure is good for me. It's how I can do all that stuff, but I'm, I'm blessed to have it. And it's, it is, I find that one thing will save my ass <laughs> when I need it the most randomly. This will come in and help me. This will come in and help me. But yeah, blessed to be where I'm at. I hope I didn't trail off there at the end, but that's about that. No, no, no. It's interesting, man, because it is, like you say, it's just another great creative outlet to have. And I fully appreciate that's going to be something you enjoy. Uh, one more question I do have on that, though, uh, I guess it was how much you actually got to work with the musicians who are playing, I guess, primarily Remington from Palais, who's who's providing yeah. the vocals for, for Beersack's character in the show and, and all that stuff. Uh, did you work much one on one with him or how did that kind of relationship work? It's funny. Have, haven't met him. <laughs> oh, really? Still? So, yeah, I do drums, guitars, bass, keys. Fucking, I did harmonica, I think, on one of them, which is quite the learning curve. But um, yeah, we talk on the internet. And uh, but like some of these things, man, like I did a Disarm Smashing Pumpkins cover. And I tell you what, man, when I got I got sent the vote. So I actually mixed and mastered that one, too, which is super cool because my studio is also a huge part. Of actually, I should have mentioned that it's probably the biggest thing of my income in the pandemic is my studio. But um, yeah, man, I, I'll just get things back from Remington. Like, uh, and you know, listen, not everyone like, I'm like, oh my fucking God. But like, man, Disarm, the, his voice just worked. Cause how do you do a Smashing Pumpkin cover and do it justice? It took a voice like Remington's, I think, to do it justice. And um, I hope that we did. I know they've heard it and enjoyed it and shared it. And that was an honor, man. And, and also like, that's another thing when like I get the call from Ash to say, hey, we're doing Smashing Pumpkins. I, I signed the band and I want you to do this. Like that's just such a high honor and you just want to do the song so much justice. And I did the best I could. And then when I heard Remington's vocals, I was like, oh my God, dude, like you are incredible. And I could just feel the pain in his voice. And oh man, it was special. Yeah, and you had, you got a reaction off Corgan, did you as well? You've heard, uh, heard he approves. Heard he approves. I think, uh, I don't know who runs their socials. It might not be him, but they shared it as well. And, and so that was sweet. Yeah, nice to hear, man. Nice to hear. Well, congrats on that, man. Congrats on all these projects. I'll leave you on this, which is uh, live shows. You know, they're starting to come back. We're all feeling kind of hopeful more and more now that we will get some more and more gigs over the next year or so coming up. I imagine with you guys, with Born of Osiris particularly, with this record, you've got to have moments on there picked out that are just built for live, right? What are the standout moments on that record already that you just kind of can't wait to get out on the stage with? It's funny, man. I, I was just... We're just talking about the set list because we're doing a so i'll give you a little rundown of what we're doing end of july we're doing texas texas has been open for a while we could have done it but there's a you, you don't necessarily want to be the first one out and not because of your beliefs and i understand it's all political now but my point is this at the end of the day you don't want to hurt your fans or cause someone to catch something and give it to a family member no matter what side of the spectrum you are on on vaccines and all that bullshit aside but um we could have done it but we like let's just give it time so the vaccinations are rolled out. There's been concerts in Texas kicking off. That's where I live. I'm in Dallas right now. And um, but we just need to give it time. But we feel like it's been open for quite a while. We're doing fine over here. So we feel good. So we're doing that end of July as like a CD release run. In the fall, we're going to go to uh, the states, kind of like some of the smaller cities. Um, in the winter, December, I believe, we'll do UK, Europe, assuming um, I don't know the vaccine rollout there. I don't know whether they're allowing people from other countries, particularly in America, who's had a controversial handling of all this, whether we can come. If we can, we'll be there. And then in following that in like late January, February, we're going to do major cities in the U.S. Um, so we're ready. Um, as far as songs and stuff you're mentioning, it's funny. I, I was like, yeah, I'm talking to the guys this morning. I was like, I'm going to practice this song today. Touch this one up. 
and I was wrong about the song it was. I said like Oathbreaker and this on the new record, it's not out yet, but they're like, no, it's Threat of Your Presence. So I can already see that we're like, there's so many live like moments on this that we're just so excited about it. And we, you know how it used to be cool to like have the music stop and then your singer says something and then it just hits or whatever. <laughs> There's just a few, we've never done any of that intentional, you know, like even like Bow Down, which is like a kind of a more noticeable one in our history. Like it wasn't like, yo, let's say this and then hit the music. It just happened. There's a couple of those on here that we're like excited about again, because those always kind of go over well live. Also, when I mentioned Nick is writing now with us, like he's got this like Lamagati riffy kind of writing style. So and Lamagati's so cool and so cool live. So like there's some of these like guitar riffs that I'm just so excited to play. They just sound nasty and um, and we're doing like the hard work. This is kind of an, a dorky, nerdy guitar thing, but you can play something like down, up, down, up, pick. But if you downstroke the whole thing, it just sounds more angry. There's a little bit more power in the down than there is in the pull of the up. So like we're working hard on like not just playing the right note at the right time, but playing it with the right intention and just making it sound nasty and dirty. And um, it's fun. So yeah. We're practicing now and there's just so many things. So Threat of Your Presence, Oathbreaker, those are like really heavy songs that I'm excited to play. I'm excited to do Angel or Alien and White Now because they've gone over really well as far as comments go. And I don't think I'm saying that from like a biased point of view. They've just seemingly done pretty well. And there's a the last song on our um, album called Shadow Morn. And so Shadow Morn, in my solo music, I do every instrument, drums, bass, keys, guitar, everything except for the saxophone and it's a main instrument on the album. And my friend Adrian, who's the saxophone player from the Mars Volta, does that with me. And we were performing my solo record in LA in January of 2020, right before the world ended. And the guys were recording vocals down the street for the new Born record. And I was like, yo, let's go hit that. And so he came over and played sax on Born, in the Born record. And um, it's funny, that song I had for Born, I'd already programmed a saxophone, so it was fake. And you couldn't really tell, but like, you know, whatever. So he redid the whole melody that I wrote. And then all of a sudden, like, he's like a genius. Like, he's like a Grammy Award. He's won Grammys for his playing and shit. So like, all of a sudden, like, there's a loop. And he was like, trying to get the line right. So we're looping it. And, I'll, and we're recording this whole thing. And all of a sudden, he just pops off on like a solo improvised thing. And literally his improvised solo, take one, is on the record, it closes it out. That's not like magic, copy paste. Like what you're hearing is literally this dude and I'm just, I can see him now doing it. I get chills. He's just like shaking and doing this shit. It's so cool, man. So yeah, I think the Shadow Morn brings a new vibe to the Born of Osiris world because of like um, the saxophone. And so it's such a beautiful moment, I think on the record. So that's another one I'm excited about. Yeah, man. So, so excited, man. We can't wait to see you out here for shows when that's allowed. Hopefully it's going to be sooner rather than later. Uh, but in the meantime, man, congrats on the record. Best of luck with the release and everything. And uh, yeah, just take care of yourselves out there. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for having me. We made it happen. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> about that. yeah, we made it. We had some tech difficulties beforehand, but we got there. We got there. It's all on the bag. Uh, really nice chatting to you, man. Chat to you again soon. All right. Absolutely. Have a good one.